it shouldn't be this hard, right? I mean, there's a there's a huge like uh, there's a huge gap between what people want to do and what they can do, and it's not it's not even really a hardware problem. It's it's really uh, like how do I like like you know I talk I used to I used to talk to people I used to go to go on site with 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 like sales and you know, it'd be like a sales engineer and I talk to these people be like look we could this radio and this setup you can do this thing and the people if the maintenance people at these sites would be like oh we could monitor you know we had this problem where you know the the the, the power went out and all these things fell over we had this water problem we want to know the basement's flooding and everybody's out because it's the weekend right but um. You know, it's great to have an on-site alarm, but if there's nobody at the building, then by the time you come in on Monday morning and you have eight feet of water in your basement, you know, it's it's already too late. So, so like, you you know, you you these the like the the problem is is the gap between like the people people know what they want to monitor, right? Like this whole IoT thing, like you you show people, this is the kind of thing you can do with an IoT solution. They'll they'll give you ideas all day long, but the problem is is that getting from idea to prototype is really it can be really really hard because you're dealing with well you know there's all these different boards out there I gotta I gotta figure out how to use Arduino I gotta find the 19 correct versions of the Arduino libraries to put together and then I have to stand up a LoRaWAN server I have to like you know there's a huge like messy middle here. Yeah, and you know, I I think one of the things we we want to do, and we we have done at Helium, is like make that messy middle a little bit smaller, right? Like, ideally, you use the Helium network. You don't have to care about LoRaWAN servers and 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 packet forwarders and blah. You know, you the packets just come. You know, the packets go in, the packets come out. And but I think the other thing on on the on the device side, there's a similar problem, right? Like the idea of how do I you know, and the WizBlox thing is a great example of this. Like they give you all the sensors. It all plugs together. Hopefully, there's you know I, I haven't played with it myself, but like you could imagine that like I I take the environmental sensor and whatever, and I build whatever my the thing I want to monitor is or the water sensor. You know I I, I built I build my prototype, and then I can go to somebody and say, okay, I just want to make this thing. Like take all these boards, smush them into one board, print print a lot of these boards. Here's a firmware I want to put on it. And it's a product, right? And the Helium network's already there. I don't have to deal with the gateway side. I don't have to deal with any of that thing. Like that's the dream, right? Of of IoT. But yeah. you know, yeah. we've been doing the IoT for what, like 15, 20 years at this point, and we we're still failing hard at like the idea that people can build the thing they want to build, right? It, it's still harder. It's still way harder than it should be. I send data and it goes. Like, however that needs to work. It should be a lot less. Like I shouldn't have to care about the radio. You as like like it's the Internet of Things. It's not the Internet of like screwing around with radio. 